Good morning. It's really good to uh, see everybody. It's nice to be back in LA, though I cannot complain at all about my time up in Seattle with uh, Tanya and Ben there on the screen and uh, Todd, her husband, and Will, the, the younger one. And um, Ben, welcome officially. Ben joined us for uh, introduction to Zen this morning. So we got to spend some extra time together and it's uh, always uh, great to be working with a uh, young inquisitive mind to keep you on your toes. Nothing quite like that, you know. Um, Melissa, thanks for joining us. Melissa is in the middle of moving from Santa Monica to Encino, where yeah, look, she has a whole yard. Sherman anyway, Oaks. <laughs> uh, congratulations on your new home, Melissa. Thanks. And thanks, mm -hmm. thanks for joining us. And um, Shalay, I know you got caught at Farmer's Market, so weren't able to make it into the Zendo, but for, thanks for making it onto the screen. And, and to everybody, um, Gabriel and uh, Karina there in the Arctic, I guess, with the blankets. <laughs> We're over here going, we're hot. And you guys are all wrapped up. Sandra, welcome from Austin. Just welcome, welcome to everybody. Um, you know, last week with family had all the qualities of being with family that that, that often happens, that, that often has. And I think most of us know what I'm talking about. You know, you have the the ups and the downs and the joy and the trials and the what, you know, and why, and who is that person that I'm supposed to be related to? And then, and then of course, just the joy of seeing them and, and the sadness of, of departing. I was really brought home when I was standing at the altar during service this morning, uh, doing the offering for uh, Maritza, Maritza Gonzalez Gavella, who is our son-in-law, Luis Ortega Gavella's cousin. Um, I know not all of you were uh, on uh, Zoom yet at that point, but on Friday, Luis learned that his uh, cousin Maritza had uh, passed uh, from complications of COVID uh, down in uh, Tampico, Mexico, which is his hometown. And there's a lot of extended family there. So, you know, obviously that hit him and the family hard. You know, Tampico is just down the coast from Brownsville, Texas. So there's actually a lot of shared um, Texas, uh, Tampico uh, ener energy there. Um, but standing at the altar and saying a few words uh, about Maritza for Luis um, and, and doing the offering, you know, I, I couldn't help but really feel what in Buddhism we call the impermanence, you know, or just the, the ever-changing quality of life and the fact that no matter what we think we know or what we believe is going to happen next or what beliefs we have about what happened previously, it's all kind of moot. You know, I mean, in terms of there's what's happening right now and who knows what's going to happen the next moment. And, you know, Luis obviously had no clue that he was going to lose his cousin. And then that, and then that ripples outward because he learned of her death as he was at the airport to pick up our son, Nick, his husband, at um, LAX. And so then, of course, that new fact of life had a profound impact on even their reunion after Nick had been traveling. And, and then, of course, we carry it into this morning and, and say our prayers for Maritza and the whole extended family, 
you know, and, and our extended family, which now um, in, includes quite a bit of family in Mexico and their family that includes us here in the States. So, you know, there's that. Who are you when you're visiting family, you know, and or, or when you're just with family members? It's like, what planet did you come from and how did you come to be like this? And how can you believe that and or not? And or why is this so hard, you know, in the middle of lots of joy and you know, brought me back to Maizumi Roshi's urgings at the end of all of his Dharma talks. Um, so I'm told, I was not able to meet Maizumi Roshi, but he ended with appreciate your life. You know, appreciate your life. You know, this, this, this is it. This, this is our lives. These are our lives. And everybody on the screen and in the room here are our lives too. And we don't, we don't all agree on everything. We don't sometimes even like each other. <laughs> you know? Who gives a damn? You know? A appreciate our lives. Appreciate their lives. Look at everybody in the room and on the screen and appreciate that manifestation of the teachings. That awakened one right there. We all do it differently. Sometimes we're annoying. Sometimes we're inspiring. Sometimes we're not. But there's always something. There's always something to appreciate, to be grateful for. And, you know, in the newsletter, I, I put a, uh, a picture of uh, most of the family last week. We were doing a portrait. Um, and, um, you know, we got a little goofy and all, you know, threw our legs up in the air. And, and um, you know, in the strange connections of synapses in my brain. When I was looking at it later, I thought of that Bowie song, Let's Dance, from before Gabriel and Karina's time. But uh, you probably know the song anyway. You know, and then I went and played it really loud. And, and I, Tanya and I talked about this, and I realized that that was one thing we didn't do last week um, we had a great time. We had a great time all in all. But, you know, if I had to do last week again, I would just remember at some point to just stop. Just stop and crank the music, whatever song, really loud and just dance and scream and jump around and forget all the story and forget who did what to whom and who thinks what about whom and, you know, or what we wanted to do and didn't get to do or what we did do and was great, but just dance like there was nothing else. Because when you really can do that, when you really cut loose and just are, it, it wipes everything out in the most beautiful way. You know, sometimes at the end of sessions, we all moo in a crazy way together. You know, it has that, that same quality in a distinctly weird Zen way. But it's, you know, the design is the same. It's like, obliterate everything other than just this. Case 73 of the Book of Equanimity, Sozan's Requited Filial Piety. The preface to the assembly says, depend on grasses and become attached to trees and you'll become a ghost. Hang on to indignity or hold a grudge 
and you'll be cursed by a devil's spell. When you call in such people, burn paper money and offer a horse. When you dismiss them, purify the water and write down a charm. How can the home be made peaceful? How can the home be made peaceful? The main case, attention. A monk asked Sozan, when morning clothes aren't worn, what then? Sozan replied, today I have requited my filial piety. The monk asked, after requiting filial piety, then what? Sozan said, I would love to get stumbling drunk. That's, that's the con. The appreciatory verse, the house of unbroken honor admits no neighbors, many years of sweeping the gates, not letting in dust. Turning from full brightness, the moon hangs low, a crescent. As winter solstice passes, yin rises to the east, northeast. Requite filial piety anew and meet with the spring. Drunken steps, crazy songs, so what if my cap falls off? Tousled hair, weaving walk, who cares? Tranquil, replete, a person who is stumbling drunk. What a wonderful koan. What a wonderful koan. I remember some um, months ago, Sharma saying, why can't we just have fun? You know, and 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 yet, Sharma, you're also like, you know, um, I mean, there's no contradiction in this. You know, like, you know, Zen is about achieving enlightenment. This is serious stuff, you know, and Melissa is often says it's about building character. Galen, I'm tempted to have you go get your guitar and play your stumbling drunk song about love. You know, it, it may not be up there with uh, Bowie, but it ha but it has that same same quality to it. My love for you breaks my heart in two. You know, what is, what is that love that is so pure, that is so complete, that is so stumbling drunk that it completely blasts through the stories? And, and leaves only the love and connection there. All right, so when morning clothes, so the clothes of morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, sometimes my diction is a little Southern California surfer. Sometimes I look at my face when in the videos and I go, where did that claymation set of lips come from? And I'm like, how do I stop doing that? But, you know, that's the way it is. <laughs> so it's morning, M-O-U-R-I-N-G. When morning clothes aren't worn, what then? And Sozan replied, today I have requited my filial piety. That's a lot of big words that, you know, maybe we should get Marsh to, to unpack for us. But... Rather than calling you, Marsh, I went to Google just to make sure, you know. And, um, you know, filial is, you know, of or from, you know, a son or a daughter. So, you know, coming from the place of being a son or a daughter. You know, piety is uh, reverence, respect for or reverence. And so then filial piety is respect or reverence for one's parents or ancestors, teachers, those who have come before us. And then to requite is, you know, to, to um, be, make good on that, to make, to make good on that. So when Sozan says, today I have requited my filial piety, you know, what, what is he getting at? I mean, it's, it's actually a really big thing here. Today, I have requited my filial piety. Today, it is complete. Today, I am complete. Today, I honor my teacher. That honoring is complete. 
Today, I, I honor my, the ancestors, my parents, my family, those who come before me. You know, I, I show full reverence and I have requited that today, right now. Right now. And how do we do, how do, we do that? You know, in the, in the Zen context as a, um, you know, a relatively newer teacher of Zen, if you compare me to Tenshin Roshi or many, many others that have come um, before me, there's a command to me, you know, from my teacher is like, when will you be independent? You know, when do you freely ring the bells and do the bows and do the teaching? You know, when are you free from looking for approval or needing the approval of your teacher? Now we can apply that to our families too. When are we free of expectations, of demands, of needing love to appear in a certain way? When can we function freely and just dance? Isn't that a, a, a beautiful view of requiting piety? It's like, here I am. This is who I am. This is what I've got. And here it is fully. And I give it to you. You know, warts, scrapes, scratches, lipstick, mascara, all of it. You know, that that looks pretty, that that doesn't, that that succeeds, that that fails. Here I am, ring the bell, do the bows, bring up case 73 of the Book of Equanimity. And so there's a lot of testing at that teaching level and at the student level, you know, of, of where is that free functioning? Where is that flow? You know, how, how deep is your understanding? How, how solid are you in the understanding? How stable? And, and koan study and working the cement mixer or cleaning cushions here or cooking in the kitchen in many ways is, is a, 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 always a test of who we are in our practice. And, and passing the test, requiting the filial piety is often just as much as, hey, Chalet, can you empty that pot and bring it over here? And when the pot freely moves from there to here, and it happens to be in the hands of Chalet, then you know it's working. Then you know it's working. And so we have Sozan saying, Today, I, I have done it. After requiting filial piety, then what? Sozan said, I would love to get stumbling drunk. So, okay, so you've, you've, you're there, now what? Well, you know, and here comes the appreciate your life. Let's dance. You know, break my heart in two. You know, I will, Bowie is essentially say, I will go anywhere with you. With love is that big. It blasts through so much. I would love to get stumbling drunk. Now, on the notion of love, uh, Shishin Wick, who's the, uh, who compiled this book, had this to say, and I think it's worth just reading what he says rather than trying to paraphrase it. Uh, Shishin is a, a direct successor of Maizumi Roshi and is teaching outside of Boulder, Colorado. There are some Buddhist teachers who teach their students to think loving thoughts about everyone. I think it's wonderful to think loving thoughts but it is not effective if one's loving thoughts are an act of pretense. If you have a moldy cake and you put wonderful frosting on top and take a bite, 
it's still going to be vile, though the frosting might taste good. So those loving thoughts have to come from your whole being, not just from some kind of facade or mask that you put on. Our training is not about pretending to be a good Zen student. This practice is about digging down and bringing to light all of your follies, bringing them to the surface, really looking at them and allowing to, them to be and then transforming them but to force some kind of a loving behavior on top of it, that will hide all these things from us. Your whole being has to be lovingness, but unless you totally appreciate yourself, it won't happen. That's independence. Now in the West, we often think of independence too as not needing anyone you know, or being completely independent from. And, and a little adjustment there that Shishin also makes is that independence is not the same as the negation of interdependence. We are without question all interdependent. So how do we full, flow freely and independently within that in? interdependence. Now there's a real trick. And we run into this in the free form of Dharma combat in book club often. I mean, we do, right? You know, it's like somebody says something and somebody is like, Dad, what? Who are you? You know, like those moments with the family. Who are you? Where did that come from? I don't get that. I don't disagree. Ugh. You know, how do, how do we flow freely with the different manifestations of the awakened one that each of us are? How do we allow that to be? How do we love from such a deep space that it allows the other to be even if they voted for Biden or Trump. You know, even if they hate the book we love. You know, even if to us somebody's being a bore at the bore, B O O R, we'll see what that looks like on the claymation lips later. <laughs> bore. You know, where does that come from? My youngest great nephew, uh, Will, in uh, Seattle there does stop motion animated movies with his Legos. And we were talking about, he just walked in, we were, we were talking about that. And I was like, can you change my lips? He's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> bore, you know, if, if somebody's being boorish, hi, Will. How? How are we with that? How are we independent of that while being interdependent with it? And where does that come from? You know, every moment is a moment to requite filial piety. Every moment is a moment to learn and to grow and to see. And that's what Shishin's talking about is face the stuff that comes up, dive deep into it. Don't, you know, paint niceness over the top of it. That doesn't mean be a jerk, you know, but, but where, where is it coming from? Who is that one? What is it that's triggering me? How do I work with it? How, how do I have an effect here? Or how do I just be with it as Ben and I were talking about this morning? How do you just be in the stream of life, in the stream of our thoughts, in the stream of our beliefs in the stream of humanity going by us at all time, in the stream of traffic, in the stream of the news, which, you know, could the news get any more serious right now? How do we dance in the middle of it, Melanie? You know, how do we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, good dancing.
Audrey, what do we give her for the dancing there? Yeah. It's okay. Hmm? Tens across the board. Tennessee gives her a 10. You know, Winston, I can't see you, but that quality of, of dancing in the middle of whatever is going on in our heads. And that's the quality of stumbling drunk that Sozan is talking about. You know, I think I'll just crank the music and dance. You know, let's get stumbling drunk. Let it all drop. Yeah, we have we have a number of, of members in um, our, our Sangha who are in recovery, you know, and, or who have been sober for a number of years from one addiction or another. And, and some of us, you know, who maybe should be, you know, so what are we to make of the precept? You know, um, you know, I vow to be sober and not to cloud the mind. And here we have Sozan, who is one of the founders with Tozan, Sozan and Tozan, so and to of the Soto School of Zen, saying, I'd love to get stumbling drunk. How, how are we supposed to reconcile that? Is, is, you know, am I telling you now, as soon as we get off Zoom to go, you know, have a drink before noon? you know, and get, and, 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 you know, fuel an early hangover. Not, not really, you know, but there is that quality, right? Of drunk on life. I think, I think it was Tanya that said, I can do that without drinking. Now I am great at doing this with dogs and kids. I'm like really great at doing this with dogs and kids, you know, like dogs are so much fun and it's so much easier for me to be stumbling drunk, completely sober, yet stumbling drunk with the dogs, you know, it's like getting them to jump around and eat my arm and race after the Frisbee and right. And, and I love, you know, Will and I, play word games all the time. You know, he's convinced that everything's a mosquito and I answer fly. And so we just do this mosquito, fly, mosquito, fly. Yeah, it, it makes no f sense. I have to edit this to keep it PG. It makes no sense. And, and how, how wonderful. Will and I have had this going on for two years now. Is it a mosquito? Is it a fly? You know, good con. Yeah, you know, good con. And when I find myself in a group of adults that that I'm like feeling challenged by or disagreement with, my escape hatch is just go play with the kids. And you'll often find me rolling around in the floor or out in the yard or somewhere on a bike with the kids. You know, and, and that's, it's great. It's great fun. It's great, great fun for me and I hope for the kids. But you know, there, there's a con for me. How do you stay in the middle of the family, in the middle of the adults and play? How do you stay and dance in the middle of that? How do you not run away? How do you bring that dance into the moment that challenges you and shuts you down from dancing. The other great one, of course, is go wash the dishes. Well, I'll just go make myself useful. You know, there's all kinds of ways to run away, and, <laughs> and I've perfected a, a few of them, right? We all, have our, we all have our place to be. So what about just practicing the stumbling drunk inhibited, this is who I am, this is who we are, this is how we are. Celebrate it, appreciate it. The koan, um, I vow to remain sober and not to cloud the mind, there's different interpretations of it, but I'll use that one right now, um, is really extremely useful if you extend that beyond uh, alcohol and drugs or substances. If you take 
that notion of addiction or sobriety to the things that we're attached to, the things we're addicted to, the things that we crave, the things that we want. Because isn't it true that at some level we're all attached and addicted? And isn't it true that our practice is supposed to be about cutting through that, cutting through those attack, attachments, desires, delusions, our, our, our unsober clinging to whatever it is that we cling to. It's, it's a much more powerful way, I think, to look at that con because you know, it in includes everything. And so if, if you've been sober for years on a substance level, there's still work to do on this precept. And, you know, if, if you're not sober and it's an issue, there's work to do there at the substance level. And if you're not sober at a substance level and it's not an issue, there's other work to do because there's always that addiction. But this quality of appreciate your life, that quality of unhinged joy and celebration, you know, how, do, how do we reclaim that? And how is our love so big that it allows us to dance with those that we disagree with? How do, how do we dance with that? Who leads, who follows? What is there to learn? How do we not step on each other's toes in the dance? Requite filial piety anew and meet with the spring. As it comes to our parents, whether they're living or dead, how do we honor them best? Be yourself, right? Any parent has uttered these words. I just want him or her, I just want them to, to, to live their lives and have some joy. So this dance, when we engage in it, is a beautiful way of requiting the filial piety to our parents because what do they want to see? They want to see us. That's all Sandra wants from Melanie. She just wants Melanie to be dancing like a fool there in the room. You know? Sharma and her son, Galen and his son and his grandson. Galen, you know, dancing or playing or running or whatever it is with your grandson. You know, all, all of us, Bill and me with the dogs. You know, and it's a way that Bill and I have of dancing together with the dogs. Requite filial piety anew and meet with the spring. It brings everything into a state of newness and growth. Drunken steps, crazy songs. So what if my cap falls off? Tossled hair, weaving walk, who cares? Tranquil replete, a person who is stumbling drunk. Practice hard, do your zazen, see yourself when you're not at your best. Own it and celebrate everything that you are. It's a beautiful dance, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful dance. And it requires every one of us to dance it to our fullest. Yeah. Appreciate your life, as my Zumi Roshi said. Over to all of you. And Galen, you'll have to remind me what the line in your song is about, uh, you know, requiting the love and days of drunkenness, because I know it's right in there somewhere. But um, questions, comments, over to anyone in the room or when anyone on Zoom. It's nice that they made those rhyme. 
and Marsh, if you need to adjust my definitions of filial and piety and requiting, please do. 